yes, we are. Uh, it's a beautiful place, it's historical, it's engaging, and as you can see, we've got lots of uh, happy businesses. So you might be asking yourself, why do we need the bids? Well, if you can stay awake for the next 12 minutes, uh, if I've not bored you to death, then hopefully you'll find out why we need the bids. Our vision is to make our community more vibrant, inclusive, healthier, a place to live, work and to visit. The vision statement was created after consultation with businesses and with the residents with a particular focus on the youth in the community. Like many of you in the room today, you have discovered that uh, businesses, well as they want to improve their business performance through the bids, many, many businesses actually want to improve uh, on the health and the vitality of the community in which they live in. So we believe our vision is truly community focused. Uh, it's hard to achieve, but we believe uh, in today's day and age, it's the right thing to aim for. My presentation is quite short and simple, a bit like myself. It covers four things, a bit of context about the Dunblane bids, what it is we're committed to delivering, how we're we going to deliver the 17 activities in the business plan and the partnerships we've created to do that. And more broadly, my view on why government need to make it easier for bids to influence change in the community. Before I uh, go any further, uh, a, a small confession. Uh, much of the content of our business plan was taken from the likes of Bathgate, Queen's Ferry and many others, as you do. However, hopefully you will find something of interest to, to take away and perhaps even use. Some context. Um, we may be beautiful, we may have a really great vision, but we're very, very light on resource. The Blaine bid has been going for less than one year. I believe we're one of the smallest bids in the UK. We have 92 paying businesses generating less than £30,000 a year. You might argue um, that, in fact, we're too small to be a bid. In the current challenge in times for councils and their budgets, we do not receive any annual funding support from Stirling Council, but rather what we have created is a partnership with them for delivery of the business plan, which I will touch on in more detail later on. The Blaine's a population of 9,000. It's a computer town. People sleep there, jump in their cars, drive to a train station, and spend their money in Edinburgh, Glasgow, Stirling and the likes. So given these constraints, we have created a partnership model to deliver the business plan. So in terms of the what, we have three interrelated themes in the business plan, promoting Dunblane, enhancing Dunblane and supporting Dunblane. Importantly, each theme has two benefactors, businesses and the community. For businesses, we have delivered quick wins in order to demonstrate value for money. Key activities benefiting businesses are pretty much the usual suspects. Events, premises improvement grant scheme, vacant unit schemes, cost efficiency on utility bills, social media, and a business forum. For the community, key deliverables include a town centre generation scheme, education and employment programme, greener, cleaner and a more colourful environment and supporting, and supporting small community groups. Businesses are the drivers of economic and social benefit. Conversely though, businesses are reliant on the local community for survival and growth. Hence the focus of our vision, vibrancy, inclusiveness and health and the creation of a partnership model for delivery. So how do we deliver? Firstly, board members include all our key stakeholders. Dunblane High School, where we have Richard, the deputy head, on the, sits on the board. We have Dunblane Development Trust, Dunblane Community Council, and Stirling Council, as well as the businesses. Each of the three themes has its own subgroup with its own members. Not all are board members which means we can bring in experts with, and people with specific interests and skills. 
Each subgroup has delegated authority, including budget allocation and spend, and are responsible for delivering the key activities in the business plan relating to their theme. So let's look at each of the three themes in terms of how and who. So in terms of promoting, we have six deliverables. Only one of the six deliverables has a material cost to Discovered in Blaine, and that is running events. However, if I can pick on a few key activities being delivered through our partnership model, a new website which is under development is being developed by a teacher in the computing department at Dunblane High School. He's also running a competition in the school with his senior students to design an app for Dunblane. This support has arisen through our partnership with the school in helping to develop an education for life and work programme. We have a student studying heritage and conservation at Stirling University. She is developing a heritage proposition for Discovered in Blaine as part of her dissertation. This will include buildings, places, genealogy and more, and will be a key element in our marketing plan for 2017. We will be working with the golf, tennis, bowling and leisure clubs to create a sports and health proposition that supports local hoteliers, residents and visitors. This will help support an image of Dunblane as an active and healthy destination. The video you have just watched was made free of charge by a guy called Neil Crawford, Crawford Aerial Imaging, a new business startup. In return for this, we will promote his business on our website, we'll promote it here today, and we'll promote it in places such as the Visit Scotland Expo in a few weeks' time. We'll also be partnering the likes of Destination Stirling and work through them in the support and delivery of our promotional strategy. Our next theme is enhancing. Again, we have six deliverables. Three activities out of the six are being led by, by the bids. Premises Improvement Scheme, Vacant Unit Scheme and the Cost Reduction Scheme. But the prize in this particular category is a partnership which we have created with Dunblane Development Trust, Dunblane Community Council and Stirling Council. Before the bid existed, these organisations did not engage or collaborate to any extent with one another. However, last year, together we sponsored Scotland's first community-led charrette, which is part funded by Stirling Council. The number of, the number of charrette outcomes mapped to our business plan, for example, town centre regeneration, parking strategy and promotion. So delivery of these three, these three activities will be shared through this partnership model. We now have a governance model in place called the Blaine Partnership Group, with each local group, the Development Trust, the Community Council and Discovered in Blaine, leading on key activities in the charrettes, with Stirling Council providing subject matter experts for each of the key activities. Moving on to our final theme, which is supporting. In this theme, we have five deliverables with three of them having small costs to the bid. But the major deliverable in this theme is our education and employment programme, which is currently at the design stage. This is a partnership with Dunblane High School. We are developing an education for life and work programme. Other players may join the partnership, including Skills Development Scotland, Fort Valley College, Business Gateway, and of course, Stirling Council. Features of the programme will include essential skills such as CV writing, interview techniques, job interviews, mock and real. We have voluntary activity with young people supporting the bid events and working on a greener and cleaner activity. We have project work such as photography and the design of our app for, for the bids. And importantly, work placements both outside school hours and within school hours. Myself and Richard Noakes took part in a breakout session this morning. We would be delighted to engage other bids to help create a sustainable and transferable model for Scotland. And thanks to Queen's for the Ambition and Elgin for already engaging in that. 
feel free to tweet us while you're sitting there if you are interested, because I believe what we're looking to shape in Dunblane could have significant benefits and opportunities for many other bids and for Scottish community. My penultimate slide. This is a summary of the how, the who and the what. The slide is intended to describe how Dunblane Bid has integrated the key community groups, how we have created, created a community partnership model, and how the bid will directly influence economic, employment, education, and environmental activity in Dunblane. It's, nearly, it's really not that difficult to do what we've done. It's quite simply getting the right people in the right place at the right time. But it's not all good news. It sounds good being at the centre of key activity, but there is stuff that could be made easier for us to support delivery. And I think for all bids, and I believe that time is right for change. I believe we are at a tipping point in Scotland in terms of size, geography and influence with regard to bids. We now need a new operating model, a new inclusive partnership model at national level, bringing in organisations such as Business in the Community, who I know are here today, a model that is designed to help rural bids as well as large urban bids, although we would exclude Aberdeen because they've got far too much money, <clears throat> a framework that makes easy working with partners such as schools, having government policies and processes that fit the rhythm of businesses, schools and other organisations. Let me give you a few brief examples that we've encountered in a short time. Why do businesses need to pay £300 fee to the council to approve the painting of their business premises when the bid can oversee this work for free against pre-agreed standards with the council? Why do businesses need to jump through hoops to support a young person aged between 16 and 18 during school hours? Why are processes designed to help large businesses and not micro-enterprises? Small businesses do not have corporate social responsibility statements. Rather, they are individuals working and living in local communities and are much more flexible in what they can do. But importantly, they need support and they need encouragement, and this takes time and cost and money. The majority of, our external, the majority of external funding opportunities are intended to benefit community-based programmes, which is fantastic, and that's the way it should be. However, notwithstanding that bids more and more fill this role, many funders view applications from bids as business and profit-driven. So we need the support from Bid Scotland and the government to change this belief. To conclude, bids are critical to the survival of rural communities. Communities are critical to the survival and growth of businesses. It's time for government to recognise the opportunity provided by the number and geography of bids in Scotland and to better support bids drive economic and social improvement. Thank you very much indeed for your attention. I do hope you have found some of the presentation of interest and if I can leave you with this final thought. Thank you.